Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the class. So for this week, we are going to read another work in the same genre of the reminiscence of the Plum Shadow Convent, which is the Yi Yu Ti or the genre of Yi Yu Ti. And、uh, this work is written by Shen Fu and titled "Sex Records of a Life Adrift." And it's very different work because、um, even if it's talking about very intimate relationship between man and woman, but in Mao Xiang's work, that's a husband and a concubine, but in Shen Fu's work, that's a husband and a wife. And also, Mao Xiang is a very distinguished、um, high class literatus, while Shen Fu is a lower class literatus who are struggling with a lot of things in life. A lot of practical things in life, so、um, their relationship、uh, with their partner, wife, and concubine is different, and the two works is very different as well. So maybe when you are reading Shen Fu's Six Records of a Life Drift,、um, compare it with Reminiscence of the Plum Shadow Convent. So Shen Fu basically lives, even if Shen Fu is living around the same time with Mao Xiang. He depicts the love story differently, and also have a very different understanding of relationships. So the work we are going to read is titled "Six Records of a Life Drift," and、uh, it is a autobiography of Shen Fu, just like what Mao Xiang does. So、uh, basically, they are not fictional creations; they are not fictions. These people they mentioned in the works are real historical. People, so they existed once, uh, uh, once in a long time, and、uh, they the we can consider the story as real stories, or um as they are writing about the the story from their own memories. So every uh work in the lit、uh, in the genre of E V T can be understood as a autobiography or a memoir sort of things. So this book is written around eighteen eleven, and、uh, re- a majority of the story is happened in the city of Suzhou. By this time in this course, you should be familiar with the name Suzhou as the city, which is a metropolitan city at that time in the Jiangnan area, in the nineteen eighteen century, which is very flourished in both culture and economy. So people are pretty rich at that、uh, at that area. And、uh, they have a lot of material goods to enjoy, and a lot of entertainment、uh, events happening. So a very lively region in China at that time. And、uh, we can consider six records of a life drifted as a successor of Mao Xiang's Yi Yu Ti genre, as I said. But、um, these two, two books is very differently concerning circulation. Because、um, Mao Xiang's work, if you still remember, he write this manuscript in memory of his deceased concubine Dong Bai, and then he send out his manuscript to a lot of his friends and ask them to write responsive um、uh, responsive poem in memory of Dong Bai as well. So basically, the once the work is done, once the reminiscences of Plum Shadow Convent is done, it is circulated. And a lot of people、uh, in the Mao Xiang's community read it and、uh, respond to it, but the six records of life drift、uh, cannot get published, or somehow didn't get published until its manuscript was rediscovered by someone from the second-hand bookstore in eighteen seventy-four. So very different、uh, fate of the two works, because by eighteen seventy-four,、uh, the author of Shen Fu already has already. Died, and also a little bit spoiler, his wife died earlier, so it's like a rediscover and a retrieve of a piece of history by people in the eighteen seventy four, and、uh, which kind of makes this story a little bit mystical in a way of reading as well. So this book contains six chapters because six records. But only four out of six records remained till this day.、Um, the first chapter is delights of marriage. The second is charms of idleness. The third is sorrows of、um, hardship, and the fourth one is pleasure of roaming. 
and uh, the last two experiences of Zhongshan and methods of living somehow get lost or haven't yet been discovered. So we only have four records out of six. And in this course, I will ask you to uh, pay special attention to chapter one and chapter three, because these two chapters are mainly focusing on Shen Fu's love relationship with his wife and how they met, how they have a lot of um, enjoyment together, and how they share a lot of interest, and also how they um, facing difficulties in life and how they respond to that. So chapter one, chapter three. But if you have any interest, you can also go to read chapter two, which has a very different taste comparing to the whole sto love romance romantic story. So if you still remember in the reminiscence of Plum Shadow Convent, uh, when Mao Xiang writing about um, the, he and uh, Dong Bai shared a lot of interest in, for example, incense or flowers or poetry. At a certain point, he will sort of jump out of the context and uh, begin to introduce to you a lot of knowledge about incense and a specific way you need to pick that incense and enjoy it with um, the window closed or things like that. And uh, this chapter, Charms of Idleness, is Shen Fu's take on those elaboration of knowledge. So basically, Shen Fu was um, collect, uh, collecting a lot of entries about how to make a life aesthetic and pleasing. And uh, bits by bits, those moments, he collects them together in chapter two. And also when writing about those charms of idleness, he will um, now and every now and then mentions Chen Yun, so mentions uh, Yun, his wife. So the, the love relationship is still there, but he was recording it in from a very different angle. So that's the chapters. And uh, um, so now let's take a look at Shen Fu who lived from 1763 to 1832. So one thing you need to pay attention to is that basically Shen Fu represent a new identity of literati, which is very different than Mao Xiang, as I said in the uh, introduction. So we can consider Shen Fu as a unsuccessful scholar, a painter, a merchant, and a private legal secretary for government official. So he basically gave up imperial examination completely after first attempt. This is pretty rare for a literate, a literatus living in the pre-modern China, because as I mentioned several lectures ago, um, the, the orthodox career path for Chinese literati is to learn Confucian classics, pass imperial examination, and then gain a position in the bureaucratic system, and then um, learn to do politics stuff to uh, manage the whole country and things like that. So you should follow that route that is designed for people who can read and write, who learn Confucian classics. So even Shen Fu, probably he also learns Confucian classics and he definitely knows how to read and write. He write this book, right? But he gave up this attempt to enter the bureaucratic system. And uh, he lived by selling works of art. So uh, because he didn't enter that bureaucratic system, and he didn't have a distinguished family background. So he, he does not have a lot of financial support from his family. So he need to find other ways to live basically. And one way he thought is to um, uh, live by selling works of art, but pretty uh, very small revenue comes from that um, selling that 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 merchandise thing, and he also failed in merchandise trade a lot of times. So basically, you'll see very practical struggle of the financial things in this book, which is very rare in a literatus uh, accounts of himself. Because we always write or uh, read things written by uh, people like Mao Xiang, who even if Mao Xiang also mentioned a little bit about how they are encountering some difficulty in the time of war, they lost a lot of goods and they only left with certain um, things 
certain uh, certain money, but that's not the main concern of his daily life. But lack of money and uh, try hard to find ways to live is the main concern for people like Shen Fu, who was struggling at the pretty much lower classes, lower status of the social class. So we can consider Shen Fu as a quasi-official and quasi-literati. So much of the attention and pathos in the six records of life drift comes from his struggle to maintain the illusion that he is a scholarly man of leisure when he lacks the financial means to be one. So as I mentioned, the second chapter, The Charms of Idleness, is basically his take on a literary life, how to be aesthetically um, pleasing in daily life, how to uh, construct your taste within very limited um, financial resources. So he has that goal and he has that idea, maybe he gained from reading, maybe he gained from um, communicate with other literati, but his life conditions, a practical level, on a practical level, he was not allowed to do that. So that kind of um, forges a lot of the tension in this whole book. And also we need to realize that um, the relationship between Shen Fu and Yun is pretty much, we can say, a new relationship. Because if you still remember um, when I was talking about Mao Xiang and his relationship with Dong Bai, Dong Bai is not Mao Xiang's wife. She is Mao Xiang's concubine. And uh, he took on, she took on the, the role, the family role of share their interest and do intellectual communication and all these um, very um, ideological things with uh, Mao Xiang. But the wife, Mao Xiang's principal wife, is taking the responsibility of uh, managing the whole family and bearing children and taking care of or educated children. So all those kind of things is belongs to the principal wife. While the romantic relationship, communication, um, interest share, sharing is left for the concubine. But here it's very different because Shen Fu basically put the two roles, concubine and wife into one in the, um, in the, in the image of Yun. So, so Shen Fu only have one uh, wife. She has, uh, he has no concubine uh, by the time we read. And he shares everything with his wife. So their marriage is based on mutual attraction rather than familial dictates. Very different, very special for a pre-modern Chinese marriage. And also, he depicts a lot of detailed sensual descriptions between husband and wife in this book. That's what makes this book very different. Even if we saw also a lot of sensual descriptions uh, uh, between Mao Xiang and Dong Bai in the reminiscence of the Plunk Shadow Comment, but that book is depicting the relationship between husband and concubine. That is allowed in the literary tradition. So you can depict your concubine's body and you can enjoy her beauty and uh, you can have intimate encounters with your concubine, but not your wife. So Shen Fu is kind of breaks the rules and establish a new relationship with a principal wife. So this quote kind of um, illustrate detailly how their relationship goes. Um, this is the first time after their marriage, Shen Fu travels far away, and when he come back, um, he said that on the boat home, every quarter hour seemed a year. When I, finally, uh, when I finally arrived at our house, I paid my respects to my mother and then made my way straight to our room. Yun rose to meet and we clasped hands, barely able to speak a word as our soul suddenly seems to dissolve and flow together like mists and clouds, leaving nothing but a clear ringing sound in my ears and the feeling that I had left my body. So very romantic description of that specific moment when they met again. We barely see such description of a moment, a very intimate moment between husband and wife 
in the long literary tradition between husband and wife. So that's kind of um, demonstrate to us how special a relationship between Shen Fu and Ming. And also another thing to pay attention to is the, um, the mechanism of memory, which basically brings past and current together. If we took this story, the whole book, as Shen Fu's memory about his relationship with Ming, we'll see the current situation every now and then pretty often peeking through the memory about the past. So when Shen Fu was describing something in the past, the future him or the him in the current situation will go back to comment on that um, past situation. So for example, when they are doing this kind of writing, and he will say that, um, I playfully inscribed her notebook with the title, Broke Up Pouch of Fine Verse. Little did I know at the time that the concealed, uh, this concealed an omen of her life being shortcut. And later when they are enjoying something, he will said, um, it is truly a case of disaster arriving as a height of the delights, as well as an omen that we were not destined to grow old and white hair together. And finally, when they, uh, when he was talking about some painting they once enjoyed together, he ends up this description of, um, can two people who were so madly in love really request that the gods judge in their favor again? So basically, um, even if he was writing the story chronologically from the beginning to the end, he himself spoiled the story at the very beginning. So we already know something bad is going to happen. Maybe Wing died. We know that from the very beginning. That kind of uh, makes a story a very different from a traditional or a conventional um, story that was told chronologically. And uh, um, besides the writing style, I think it also um, hinted kind of, so some sort of mechanism of memory. When you remember something, this current you will have the urge to comment it on that. So that kind of idea. And I think this is very interesting and uh, kind of alluded to us Shen Fu's overall idea about love and relationship. So let's have a discussion on Thursday about this specific um, mechanism of the encounter between past and current. And one more thing I want to mention is the contrast between big and small. So um, in the in chapter two, which I um, in which you can read by yourself, um, Shen Fu mentions a lot about his obsession with something small and a limited space. So for example, he said a lot about his childhood memory when he was trapped in a very limited space, and he will took something as little as a mosquito, as uh, imagine it to be big birds like crane and uh, flying in smoke, um, in cloud, that kind of image. So he was, uh, he enjoyed a very good time playing with himself. And also thinking about when you are very little, um, you, you, your body is naturally very small and uh, everything to you is so big. So that idea uh, actually sustained throughout Shen Fu's whole life. So not only in the childhood, later when he grew old, he developed a obsession about garden or bonsai. So all these things are a miniature kind of creation of the bigger space. And this is how Shen Fu enjoyed. And this kind of contrast is also, also implies his overall idea about love, fate, or life. So what, which part you can take control of, which part you just cannot, and is always pressing you and uh, crush on you and uh, forces you to make decisions. So talking about Pen Zai, he and uh, um, uh, Yun uh, once put a lot of effort to make the perfect bonsai and to taking care of that, enjoying looking at, at it. But one day, uh, cats just run, run through that bonsai and break it. And he makes the comments, 
even this oh he he said uh he said he made this comment to Yun that even this small effort of ours has made the fashions of things jealous. This is a very interesting comment. So he was blaming the bigger things to destroy the small enjoyment they shared. And um, when when you are reading this whole story, please keep in mind this contrast between big and small and to see how it kind of um, influenced Shen Fu and Yun's overall idea about love and their response to hardships. And finally, I want to introduce my favorite piece um, of this whole book. That is when Shen Fu was talking about Yun's um, exquisite way of making tea. So he said, during those summer months, when the lotus flowers first started to bloom, they would close up in the evening and open up again with a dawn. Um, Yun would place a few tea leaves in a tiny gauge bag and put it at the very center of the flower. The next morning, she would retrieve it and steep the uh, tea leaves in boiling rainwater. The charm of its fragrance was truly exquisite. So I find a picture, I'm able to find this picture that is pr probably a modern recreation of this practice. And uh, to me, this is one of the very romantic moment between the couple. So Yun dedicated a lot to use very limited financial resources to create a tasteful life for, for Shen Fu and for them to enjoy together. And just thinking about how the lotus fragrance can um, penetrate the tea leaves and make the tea not only have the fragrance of tea, but also have the fragrance of a flower. So all those kind of innovation is um, very much uh, represent Shen Fu's ideal life as a literati. Okay, so this is my short introduction about the book and Shen Fu as a lower class literatus. And I really hope you enjoyed this week's reading. Don't forget to leave a comment down below. You can talk about your comparison between Shen Fu and Mao Xiang, or how would you understand Shen Fu's relationship with his wife. And let's uh, have an interesting discussion on Thursday's class. Okay, so see you on Thursday. Bye.